Hello lovely people, today we will be looking at Alpine PXC R500 DSP. Before we start, I would like to thank Frank from Hapa King for sending me this DSP to check out. Thank you very much, Frank. And this is going to be a very short unboxing video. We're going to have a look what's inside and we're going to just see what is this supposed to be used for. So PS PXE R500 is kind of a budget Alpine DSP. It has six channels and it's an amplifier as well. So on the box, uh, on this side... It does state some specs, however, those specs are not that right. It says 4 channels, 50 watts max, with a THD of 10%. So, uh, this description kind of varies depending on where you find it, because it's supposed to be 25 watts, 1% THD, because the thing is, Alpine never ever rates anything at 10% THD, which is weird. And uh, according to the specs, it has 31 band of parametric or graphical EQ, time alignment, and all that kind of good stuff. So let's unbox it and let's have a look what's inside. We have some instructions, obviously all in Chinese because it came from China. And in the box, we should have a USB cable and some brackets and i believe that's it so this the warranty card let's open it and let's have a look so this is a dsp itself let me remove the box and take it out of the packaging see i haven't removed it yet i have to ask for help from my trusty knife let's see so this is a dsp B and we have some accessories box and the box is just a cable USB cable and some fixing brackets. Let's have a look actually at the brackets that come with this DSP. So it has some brackets and some screws. So these wood screws, I would assume, will be mounting the actual brackets to whatever you will be mounting it. For example, a table. And these, at the bottom here, we have holes, screw holes. And, yep, exactly like that with this. Just like that for brackets. Yeah, and then you literally mount it to any kind of amp rack or whatever you have nice little thing okay so let's have a look at this so this is a six channel dsp amplifier yeah what it has it has two analog inputs rca and four high level inputs as well left rear front and through this harness it has the speaker level outputs as well. So speaker in, speaker out, and then on the same harness, we have remote, ground, plus 12 volt, and accessory. And here, uh, let me just do this. So we have these four wires. The rest is for the speaker. So these are color coded, I believe exactly the same as typical, uh, car signal wires that you have in the doors green gray white and purple yeah exactly the same here we have the yellow one this is live this is a fuse inline fuse let's open and have a look so it is a glass fuse i don't see the value give me a second Okay, so this is it looks like I don't know if I'll be able to show you uh, 15 amp 250 volt so this is a 15 amp 
fuse. I'm gonna put it in later, that's fine. And the wire itself, it looks to be, I wanna say 14 gauge. It's not a 12. 14, 16 gauge, something like this. So for a DSP, even if it's like uh, six channel times 25 watts, I think it's plenty enough. So this is just a harness. Now this uh, DSP is, uh, as the box, Bluetooth compatible. So it has a Bluetooth, external Bluetooth thingy that you can plug in, similar to the one that what was it, Museway? I think Museway has as well. And uh, it's a little like on the cable and a little adapter. Now, with the DSP as it comes, it not comes with the DSP, you have to buy it separate as well as a controller. You can buy a controller as well for it and you can have it uh, in the front, somewhere mounted where it's convenient for you to use. It is a metal, brushed metal, very nice feeling. As I mentioned, two analog ins, four high level ins and four outs. Uh, this is probably how it wakes up from accessory or from high level signal. And Bluetooth on this side, on the other side, you have six outputs analog, which are rated at if we have a look at the manual, now I don't understand Chinese, I can't read Chinese, but I would assume that would be six or eight volts. So I think it's up to six, up to eight volts per channel. And we have input sensitivity, uh, I, I don't know what it is, so 25 watts. So via high level, it takes up to 30 volts, probably. That's my guess. And yeah, nothing more in this. So now, uh, the price. This DSP is not available to buy anywhere in America or in the Europe. It's for Asian markets only. Yeah? And uh, the price that I found, again, again, it varies, but it's somewhere around 250 to 300 pounds. It could be found a bit cheaper, maybe like 220 pounds. And uh, for comparison, a Helix DSP Mini, I believe is six channels as well, that cost 350 pounds brand new. So this would be a cheaper alternative if it would be available to buy in the UK. Now for Asian markets, if you have to import a Helix DSP Mini, for example, 350 pounds plus import and everything, it's gonna be like close to 400 pounds. So this would be a much cheaper option. Now, what is the main use case for this DSP? Where can you use a four, six channel DSP? Mainly it's for factory upgrade. A lot of systems in Far East and in Asia, they're using passive crossovers on the speaker. So you have a three-way or a two-way, they use a passive crossovers. And that's where you have for the front, two for the front, two for the rear, and for the subwoofer or two subwoofers. So potentially you can have three-way front passive, two-way or three-way rear passive, and subwoofers. Now you could have a maybe semi-active, for example, mids and tweets on one, mid bass on channel three, four and subwoofer. Or if you don't have a subwoofer, if you don't run a subwoofer, we can have all three-way front fully active. But this is not for big systems. It's mainly for factory because the thing is like, you don't have any opticals. You don't have any digital signal in. All you have is two analogs or this. So the main use I would imagine is for regular factory upgrades. You have four channels that are coming from the factory head unit and then you distribute it into amplifiers. This would work as well perfectly with a five channel amplifier. Again, as I mentioned, one, two for front, three, four rear, five, six, four sub. Another very interesting scenario what I could imagine this being used, and I would imagine I would be using this as well for, is for home. Imagine if you would have a 
three-way towers and you could run them fully active just from this little box. 25 watts is plenty enough to listen on moderate levels, especially at home, or you could have two-way bookshelves, you need four channels, and an active subwoofer channel. So this would be perfect for in-home use. The only thing that we need is a brick, some kind of a 12-volt supply to connect to this. But in general, it looks like a very cool, nice little DSP. Yeah, it's not that small, but it's not huge. You can hide it anywhere, to be honest, even under the dash probably. And with using the inbuilt amplifier, you could run it. The thing is, I'm planning, if I will have enough time, to put this DSP uh, before I go to Emma and to have my Alpine status two-way, just two-way, running uh, tweets and mid-bass, just running from this box and tune it. I will be diving deep into the Alpine DSP software later on when I'm going to have the DSP in my car. But for now, it's just been a short unboxing of the Alpine PXE R500 6 channel DSP. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.